Welcome everyone to the Off the Record podcast with Nick Thielen. My guest today is Wilka Tribe. And Wilka Tribe blends a variety of genres, including psychedelic Latin rock, cumbia, reggae, and hip hop, giving every song a unique flavor and connection to Mother Nature and Latin culture. This multicultural band has deep roots in the Ambient Mountains of Peru and has spread their art through North, South, and Central Alberta since 2018. I'm very pleased and honored today to be joined by Pachak, Nicole, Patrick, and Ben, the members of Boca Tribe. Thank you today for joining me on the Off the Record podcast with Nick Thielen. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, let's. I want to start with uh, Patchak and ask about. Um, tell me about why you started the band and uh, the importance of the Peruvian culture in your band and how those roots. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question, Jess. Uh, um, this type of music has been started um, in the late late sixties, uh, early seventies in Peru, with uh, when when the world starts to be more multicultural, and in Peru is starting to receiving Peruvian uh, Peruvian people they went to study to uh, in countries like uh, U.S. or Europe to study university, learn to play the electric guitar and came back to Peru in, in, in vacation time and, and with uh, cousins that know, knew to play different percussions and the other, other instruments, starting to mix them and coming out with different, different other, other, other type of combinations and, and music. And that's how all this got started in, in back in time. And what I'm doing is a new a new setup in, in the instruments and the way to perform and the way to 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 the whole display of of some of the music and the way the composition adapted a little more to the modern way to compose music and songs mm -hmm. and and so that's how we could drive uh, got created because it's a it's a continuation of the the legacy from from all these musicians, all these uh, be because all these musicians that I'm talking about are nowadays are uh, big, big musical project, big bands. The, the plays all over the world, like the the Stejos, like Los Mirlos. They are big bands from Peru. They have this fusion of uh, Latin rhythms, like cumbia, uh, but in the Peruvian way, mixed with the psychedelic guitars. Because back in time, that, that was like uh, what happened. And if you go to YouTube, you can find a big playlist of this kind of music and other, other type of setups. No? And this is what going to be the, with, the Andean, with the Andean music, no? what makes the, the Wilka. The Andean side is because of these instruments, the, the pan flute, las zampoñas, uh, el charango. Uh, La Ocarina, no? the, this is another one that, that I play like that. And, and instruments like that. And all of this is also medicine music on the other side. It's because the, in South America we have this concept of the, the medicine music for, for centuries. Uh, back in time, in the in the Inca time, the doctors will prescribe as part of the medicines for patients to go to the musical shamans to receive uh, music uh, performed to their bodies, uh, different vibrations with with different with the sacred smokes like uh, Palo Santo. No? No, in, in here you guys use sage, no? for example, and the drums, no? all of these vibrations creates a cleansing because uh, there is medicines for different parts. And there is uh, medicines also for the soul, for the, for, for the inside of our soul, our feelings, our emotions, all that energy sometimes cannot be treated only with chemicals. 
can, or, or with the mind, with, psych, with psychology. So the musical intervention, the musical frequencies has this power of medicine. So it was prescribed, you know, and you need to go to the doctor of music. You know? And so kind of like what we have in nowadays, for example, we call it sound bath, right? Fantastic. And before we get too far into the band and the actual history, I'd like each of you to kind of introduce yourself and talk about your roles within the band. If we can start with Nicole and then kind of go along. To... Yeah, my name is Nicole and I am the drummer of, of Local Tribe and also do some of the manager stuff and whatnot. So yeah, that's me. Um, my name is Ben or Benjamin. I play the bass guitar, uh, an instrument that I um, had gone about a decade without playing before this band signed me up. And um, it's been a wild ride ever since. <laughs> and I'm Patrick, and I play the electric guitar for the band. Amazing. Okay, um, so can you guys tell me a little bit about, uh, maybe uh, Patrick or Ben, can you talk a little bit about um, some of the uh, creative process, in particular maybe when it comes to some of the guitars? Or, um, Do you want to talk about that? Sure, yeah. So Patria will have a lot of ideas in terms of songs that he brings to the band and um, we will jam on them and just try and get a good creative flow and, and groove going. Um, it's, it's always a really fun time. It's, it's always uh, really rewarding to work uh, with, with this band because it's really uh, collaborative. There's a lot of input that uh, happens between members, and Patra has such a, a strong, also creative vision that is really interesting to, to work with. He always has uh, good kind of ideas on in terms of textures, um, you know, for lead guitar, in terms of things that he's hearing, and it's really a, a great kind of back and forth in terms of ideas that come uh, from that process. So it's, it's really cool. Um, yeah, he brings, you know, uh, the musical culture of Peru and introduced me to uh, chicha um, music. So a lot, of, a lot of really cool bands that, uh, <laughs> you know, that have really inspired the band um, and, yeah, really informed my playing with the band. Uh, it's, yeah, so that's, that's kind of a piece of, a piece of how it goes. And... Uh I know that you guys have had the opportunity to kind of perform um, all over Alberta. Can you talk about maybe some of your recent shows? Uh, you did one. Yeah, recently we just did one on Saturday in Lacombe County um, due for a fundraiser out at Mulhurst Bay, and that was a lot of fun. It was for a good cause, and it was actually for a cause that um, hits close to home um, and ensuring that the environment around there and the and Pigeon Lake itself will be will be okay in the long term. So that was a really fun show. It was. Yeah, for the community there. Yeah. Absolutely. So can you maybe talk a little bit about sort of the environment that you guys try to create when you play? It feels like you sort of create a create a space or an environment for yourselves, but also for the people experiencing your music. You kind of talk a little, a little bit about the kind of the healing powers of music, I guess, if that makes sense. But can you talk about sort of the environment that you try to create for the audience and for for yourselves yeah for sure thank you very much for the question again such a good question is uh is uh what we do is um, the the medicine music you no know, the sound bath will be this slow beat right the drum boom boom and this and the music everything will be chill and healing and sound, not to like kind of uh, meditation mode, but also we have uh, the other bit, the other the other kind of uh, ceremony, the healing ceremony, which will be the dancing ceremony, because the dancing with the music is uh, two powerful combinations. The medicine music in a, in a sacred space, in a safe musical mm -hmm. space, not to open up, you know, and to to find unity, to don't find um, dance move, judgmentalism kind of thing. You know, that everybody says free, free, it's freestyle dancing, or, uh, for dancing everybody for for celebration of uh, the the higher energies and 
that we got in our in our planet. So, and all these rhythms like like huayno, the traditional. Because what I'm playing in the in the in the charango is a rhythm from Peru that is called huayno, which is the the dancing the dancing beat from the mountains. And and so happens that this this beat is a dancing beat for centuries that we have for centuries. Why not? There's thousands, mil thousands of of why not of songs and. It's a very fun beat that happens to match with the reggae, with blues, with cumbia, with electronic music, with with all sorts of modern genres. Matches perfectly, like magic. It flows, and and so it turns a reggae. We can turn it into an Andean reggae. A cumbia. We turn it into a, a, an Andean cumbia. Psychedelic music. We turn it into a psychedelic music because. Uh, it's also part of the culture of our culture. It's a lot of multiculturalism, a lot of travelers, a lot of uh, people exchanging, learning, and teaching. And so, if you go to over there, you will find a lot of uh, also interesting projects with a lot of combinations. Now, and here I'm missing, for example, my my didgeridoo player, my 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 tribal djembe player and, <laughs> and a little bit other, other more instruments that we can still add to what we have you know or like what I have right now is super powerful but that's how we do it you know and that's mm -hmm. how the recordings of our music we have because I also play the djembe I also play the didgeridoo and for the recordings um, I know exactly what I want what kind of sound and what moment and everything to 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 go in the mix perfectly and so we're working in, in that yeah, and one of the things that inspired this project for me and one of the things I've been asking the other artists about, and you, you guys can all kind of talk about how you feel about this, but we talk a lot about, you know, uh, pre, pre-COVID, pre-pandemic times we talked about, like, what um, playing, um, you know, what, what playing music has for somebody that's going to enjoy a concert. But now, seeing as we haven't really been able to perform as much live in those last two years, what kind of things do you guys personally get from performing on stage? Uh, you know that you maybe missed during that time. You know that you weren't able to experience those things. Do you have any a different perspective of being able to perform and being able to do the mm -hmm. passion, the things you're passionate about now? Yeah, like one of the biggest things is like connection. Um, what music has a capacity to do is to connect all of us. And when we're playing on stage, it's like having that connection to the audience and connecting people. And in COVID, that's when we're like, take it, it's taken away um, that connection. So music can still transcend being in the same room and at least create that kind of environment where it's a connection for everyone. And that energy is, is through received by everyone. So for me, that's a really important thing. Um, and not necessarily just connection to people, but connection to um, like nature itself and even further into like divine as well. So, yeah. Me, I try to use my time wisely during during the isolation, during COVID time and everything. When we don't, uh, I practice more, I compose more music, I master my, my previous songs. I, I work a lot on, on, the, on the project still internally. To, to make things even better. He's and always working on the project. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> it's because the project is, so, is another manifestation of the Pachamama culture, yeah. the shamanic culture. We're always going to have a, a, musical, a musical group to, to celebrate after ceremony, have some music, after healing, have done some dancing music for, for to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to kind of echo what Nicole said. I mean, um, just the, the experience of playing music in a live setting and having that direct back and forth energy feedback between you and the audiences is something that's really special and you can't really replicate it anywhere else. And um, being able to play live shows again and hopefully playing a lot more in the near future is just, it feels fantastic for that exact reason. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's a it's a magical thing for sure. Live music is very missed, <laughs> but uh, it was also a creatively fruitful time, I think, for a lot of people, and we're kind of reaping uh, some good benefits uh, for 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 the artistry that's out there. So it's it's exciting uh, right now, uh, working with this band and in the greater music world. So that's, that's how I feel about it. Can you guys maybe talk a little bit about? Uh the inspirations or motivations, uh, like idols that you might have had that helped you to kind of create the music that you're, you know, like is there certain, maybe there's people in your culture that you've uh, looked up to that have helped you to create the different uh, generations oh. of people? Maybe? Oh yeah, it's, a, it's been a, a, a very long journey, man. Like uh, I, I jammed with 1,000 musicians, maybe, probably. In, in the beach, in the jungle, in the mountains, in the deserts, in in the cities, in the in the woods, in the forest, and with all sorts of musicians in the street, in bars, and restaurants, and concerts, and I, I was part of a band in in Peru too. I was only my job was just to play the charango, and <clears throat> the. During this all this time, uh, around 2011 is when in my I I always play music, but in 2011 is when I start putting my ideas in order. When when uh, my mother gave me a charango as a present, and she came from another country and she wanted to learn, but she never learned to to play the instrument. She gave it to me, and the minute she gave it to me. It was like a kind of a spirit thing. It, 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 it involves me, and I started like learning, learning every day. I never, and I didn't stop since 2011 to, to, to today. This is the second charango that I have, and it's kind of also a, a mystical connection because I really never study music. I, of course, I have my my uh, theory musical background. But uh, not much. I don't really write and read music kind of thing. I I never been in a conservatory or something like that. But for many years, yes, I I, I got the books of music and I learned. But my biggest teacher has been the charango and the zampoñas. These two instruments by starting to learn to play them both together. That Peruvian technique of playing the both at the same time. That opens ancestral ancestral inspiration in my brain that was just waiting for the moment to to wake up when these two instruments were getting together that that's something that was in my karma and and so that's how I started creating interesting tunes that comes from the mind and comes from the heart in a, in a special way and so I can I can hypnotize musicians like Patrick and Nicole and they, they say it's an interesting material that there is to work about. There's something here that can be done, something like that. And and it's magic because, for example, one of the songs that we have, it came in a magical way. Like I just one day, like playing jokes, I say, Charango, teach me one song. Give me a magic song, a magic tune. Please give me a magic tune. I grabbed the charango. I didn't know what I was going to do. I just I started hitting this, and it was Shaman's Dream. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is a magical tune. Like, yeah. like it, it came from like from nothing, from the first shot, from the first try. Like, like now, like out of magic, magic a connection. And pa Patrick's guitar solo on that is, yeah, it's amazing. It's, yes, it's, it's like the the. the the continuation, you know, like uh, this energy goes and it finds other, mm -hmm. other, 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 other ports, other islands, other universes, and we are connecting. Yeah. That's what basically we're doing. Like um, I'm doing, like uh, with the friends, is uh, putting in, in practice all this, all this um, journey of not only music. Also, uh, therapies, shamanic therapies that I've been uh, learning and practicing on myself, on my family, on, on friends, on patients too. Since 2001, I've been studying, practicing yoga, practicing shamanism, practicing ceremonies, uh, practicing Reiki. Practicing many, 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 many teachings. And I recently graduated from a two-year 
shamanic training uh, from a very serious school from Peru The uh, I am part of. It's called Causal Pacha. It's a shamanic school. You, you can find and the, the master is a, is a, is a shaman. There's a kind of a kind of a messiah shaman kind of thing that is waking, traveling the whole world and, and like initiating <laughs> kind of a guru. And he's been my, 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 my shaman for, for the past two years. And I just kind of, want, in May, I graduate from the school after two years, accomplishing the two-year model. And that has been also another big motor for inspiration, for putting all the, the project in, in order and together. That's also part of what is going on. And that's what you guys feel in the, in the live show because I am doing things energetically in the energetical level mm -hmm. for, for create the, what I'm talking about, the Wilka drive for create the, the sacred space, the, the safe environment where you can come and dance and enjoy and have a good time. And that's what Pachamama wants. That's what. Uh, oh, amazing. Uh, Patrick, I'd love to know uh, what you feel um, is, is the band's, uh, or what, what, what you're most proud of as a band, or what you feel uh, is, is the thing that you've accomplished that you're most proud of. Wow, I think that's that's yet to come. I mean, we're, we're, we're always moving forward and um, doing doing a lot of collaboration and, and so I mean I'm just really happy with the music itself at this point and uh, every time we're on stage I'm, I'm proud of presenting uh, what we've worked on together and, and how good it's it's sounding so there's you know in terms of performances in, in the past the heart of the city was a really a really great pleasure to to, mm -hmm. to be a part of, and I was super proud of that. Absolutely. <laughs> a lot of heart of the city was in there. Yeah, we love it. Yeah. Yeah, Patrick and I has a lot of communication about the, the music, the, the, the sounds, because, um, like he says, I'm teaching him the chicha. Uh, because this music that we're doing has many different names. Me, personally, <laughs> I call it Waikiki Rock, what we're doing because Waiki is a term from my tribe, it's called brother. And everybody in the world is a Waiki. You, you will go to over there, we will call you Waiki, Waiki. Oh, where is that Waiki? It's over there, so it's the brother. Kind of Lakota, kind of, kind of something like that. Waiki, and so thousands of Waikis, and this is kind of like the kind of music that we do, and this is our culture, you know, like uh, the, the self-healing, with the techniques, with the therapies, the, the, the different techniques, different therapies. To, uh, to, to, to kind of uh, go from that, I know, uh, Nicole, uh, you and I had spoken kind of about your journey as far as um, the, the medical things that you've gone through and mm -hmm. in terms of how that has helped, uh, in terms of how playing music and being a part of this band has helped you to kind of recover and uh, go through your journey. Um, what would you like to share about that journey? Yeah, so like um, around COVID time, uh, like last year, um, but even the year before that, I was um, uh, diagnosed with a pretty rare brain condition that caused the cerebral spinal fluid in my brain to pool. So I had to go through some si pretty serious um, events and uh, had a had a brain surgery last about just over a year ago, and leading up to it because of COVID, um, lots of delays in the medical world, and um, ended up being in a life threatening situation for quite some time. Um, had a lot of like my body was failing, um, everything was like coming. I I actually lost my vision, I lost my hearing um, for some time, and I used to play music, and I kind of got it got put to the side and. Um, in the recovery process, I um, started playing at, um, I just played at a, a hospice center. I started playing flutes there. And then my friend uh, John said, you know, you, you need to meet Pacha. Um, and I'm like, there's no way I can be drumming right now. Like, I just went through some pretty serious stuff. There's no way I can be be doing this and thank you for introducing <laughs> me, <Nicole. laughs> and yeah i i did and i even though i was like i'm not really sure i'm ready like, they talk about the doctors talk about 
it taking year, if not more, to fully recover from this. And so part of that process that I had to go through too was like kind of relearn how to play. Also, I never had played Latin music before. So double, that was a whole new... Um, double challenge. <laughs> whole new challenge for me while I was also still recovering. And I mean, this process is... I'm still recovering. I'm still going through some stuff with the, with the health. But I don't think I would have recovered the way I had if I if I hadn't had music to, to be there as a support and be my... Um, kind of be my hug in a way. And also to play... Like, I'm so honored to be able to play with these guys and, and, oh, and come together and just... Um, it just be together creating music and it's been I don't think there's anything that can describe crossing over the threshold of life and coming back and knowing no I have to I have to do what I came here to do and that can be that not just music but it's not sorry just music but it's like a whole th a whole bunch of lifestyle changes have been very difficult and music has been that support for me and has been that gift um, and being able to be there for people too as they cross over the threshold and sing to them or play music um, for them because I was very lonely in the time of when I was thinking that I might not make it and um, but music was always that gift for me and then I got my hearing back and my vision back and um, I don't know why I'm here, but I'm still here and I'm very grateful and very honored to play with these guys. <laughs> yeah, it's been quite a, quite a journey. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, one of my last questions for you guys is, is a little bit about uh, what's next. There's a, I know um, you guys were talking about an EP or a potential album. Is there, can you guys talk a little bit about what your goals are? We do have an EP coming out pretty soon. It's just in the engineering phase of things. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, we're working on an album as well. And Yeah, we got yeah. like uh, 20 songs. Mm -hmm. and right now we are focused on recording some few of them, the ones that we have more tied in the musical term and working in the other material. And yeah, we've been doing like uh, small videos and ceremonies. They are also part of the, the project because this project is a shamanic project. It's, and so um, there is some ceremonies and rituals that we have to do in order to, to balance, cleanse, empower, heal, and do, do that kind of energy, that, that work. And that, that means we've also been doing some video shots. That we're preparing a video for one of the songs that we have to, to have a video mm -hmm. and start promoting. We've been creating like a website and the channel and YouTube and all these other things. Now the things open up, things come back to normal and to, to, so they can be live shows again. And we're preparing also next, next live performance and other venues. Well. Uh, would you guys mind to play some music for us? Oh, for yeah. sure. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for the invitation. Awesome. <laughs> thank you for the interview. Thank you for everything, guys. You're welcome. Well, can you first tell me uh, about the first song you're going to play? Tell me the name of the song and then tell me the inspiration behind that song. Uh, uh, the first song is Chayaku, the Carpai Ceremony, if you want to talk yeah, about that. Yeah, it's called Carpai Ceremony. And Chayaku is like kind of the nickname of the song. Uh, because uh, that's what um, you do in a carpai ceremony, it's like a, a shamanic initiation ceremony. And, and it's called carpai, and the song is about uh, going away a little bit from all the, the, the modern life thing, and including the, the, ancestral, the, the ancestral lifestyle too find some kind of balance between both lifestyles and, and so it's a carpai ceremony. So it's like the story of two guys that go to, to the mountain looking for the temples and they do uh, this carpai ceremony. Thank you for sharing your music with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, hello. Thank you very much. We are Wilka Tribe. And this is the song for the Eagle and Condor prophecy. <laughs>
What is the next song you're gonna play for us? The next song is Eagle and Condor. It's a, it's a very well-known prophecy you know, among all the ancestral cultures in, in America. The prophecy of the eagle and the condor. The prophecy, the condor from the south and the eagle from the north. And when they will meet, uh, a new future, a new era, a new reality will, will be, a new sun will rise. And so the, the prophecy talks about, in the song we describe a little bit what is the deep meaning of the, of the prophecy, which will be the condor uh, will be flying in, in our heart, the condor will be the heart, and the eagle will be the mind. And you have to make them fly both of them together. Well, thank you for sharing the story and the meaning behind the music, and I really look forward to sharing it with our audience. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you very thank much. You. Thank, you. thank you. Happy Solstice 21 today. <laughs> happy Solstice for us is the, the Inca New Year, and we're very happy to, to be here. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Now we're going to continue with another song, and we want to say thank you very much for this uh, opportunity to tell us group and everyone behind the cameras and all the team. Love you guys, you got wonderful people. Thank you so much for this. And we want to dedicate this ceremony, this music ceremony for you.
You can find us in media too, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Wilka Tribe. We will be putting the, in there more videos for you. Thank you so much. We're just starting the channel. You can support us. Thank you. Love you. This is music for everyone. Well, thank you guys very much. I appreciate your time, and thanks for joining me today on the thank Off the you. Record podcast. <laughs> thanks to everyone for tuning in and listening. <laughs>